Now, BP isn't the only company having some troubles. Concerns about the dangers of natural gas drilling are gaining attention across the country. And one man has made it his mission to capture the risks on film. Check it out. <laughs> Sometimes it, it bubbles and hisses when it comes out. So I highly recommend Would that you, you do. drink it? <laughs> I won't drink it. When Cabot and them came in to get the water and they were telling me it was okay to drink, I said, well, here, go ahead and drink it. And they wouldn't drink it. Wouldn't drink it. All right, that was just one personal account in Josh Fox's documentary called Gasland. In the film, Josh sets off on a cross-country journey to uncover the environmental risks of the looming crisis. The award-winning Sundance documentary, uh, documentary debuts tonight at 9 p.m. on HBO. So, Josh, good to have you with us. So, tell us exactly what was your mission all about here? Well, it wasn't a mission to start out with. Um, my family was asked to lease our land in the Upper Delaware River Basin uh, of Pennsylvania for gas drilling. And uh, the narrative coming out of the natural gas industry and the environmental groups in my area were so different that I decided to investigate it. Basically, the gas industry was saying we would have no problems. This is basically a fire hydrant in the middle of a field. You it's will clean, it's safe, it's, it's clean, all that good exactly, stuff. All that stuff. And I visited a nearby town where you saw the clip um, called Dimmick and found widespread water contamination. People really uh, terrified, feeling that they'd been overrun. Um, their animals were getting sick. Their children were complaining of illnesses. There was uh, a, a complete sort of total atmosphere of fear, Halliburton trucks swarming everywhere. So that turned me on to the fact that actually um, this is the largest domestic gas drilling campaign in history. It's going on in 34 states. And I set off and uh, went to about 24 states. In the film, there are about 10 different states. Um, I, I talked to hundreds of people in countless towns about what was going on, and mm -hmm. it was the same story everywhere. Water contamination, air pollution problems, health problems, um, and a feeling that they uh, didn't get what they signed up for when they leased, and that this was an environmental disaster that was unfolding in front of them, and nobody was paying attention. You have uh, found, in some places, air pollution that's 50 times higher than, it, than it's allowed to be, or 100 times higher than it's allowed to be. People have domestic animals with hair falling off, and you've got... Uh, water, I don't know if we have the clip, that you can actually light on fire as it comes out of the faucet. Yeah. Uh, are you concerned, uh, or, or do you think the companies are concerned that in this kind of environment, when BP is being forced to raise a $20 billion fund to pay back uh, the victims of the spill, that the companies are going to run into some serious Aaron Brockovich or worse kind of problems if they continue to operate like this? Well, so far, the companies have been denying that there's any uh, contamination, which is really unfortunate um, because it's fairly obvious. I mean, when you can light your water on fire and it's clear that that water is coming from the gas drilling and the shale layers uh, where they're doing the drilling. Oh, you've got it right there, yeah. It's unbelievable when you see that, and this is something we saw in countless places um, and heard reports of from Australia, Canada, Texas, Colorado, Wyoming. And I might add, it's not just flammable water. There are also these chemicals that they use to drill with. They drill with 596 different toxic chemicals. That's actually um, the, really the interesting part. They yeah. use millions of gallons of fresh water. They put in 600 chemicals and push it down to, what's it called, fracture? It's called fracking. fracking. Yeah, it's fracking. hydraulic fracturing. It's uh, revolutionizing uh, gas uh, drilling. And what they do is they use this water, at two to seven million gallons of water per well, infuse it into the landscape at such high pressure that it actually breaks apart the rock and that frees up the gas. And the problem is they leave most of that material in the ground right. and it's been turning up in people's domestic I was going to say, how do they keep wells. it out of the water table? Well, yeah. it's supposed to be happening so low, uh, far down there, that it's not supposed to get into the water table. But this process has been characterized as brute force. Um, it's actually something that they're denying it. But what, what I've seen across the nation are really, really serious problems with this technique. And I, I wonder myself, does T. Boone Pickens know that these water contamination incidents and all this stuff right. is happening at such a large degree when uh, he's going out there saying that, that uh, natural gas is the way of the future? We just got about 40 seconds. And what you point out is that, that this process, this fracking, is exempt um, really from most basic environmental regulation. So to me, lawmakers have got to be sitting up and taking notice. Yeah. 30 seconds here, Josh. They're, are they? They're exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act. That happened in the Energy Policy Act of 2005. Uh, they're also exempt from the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Superfund Law, the Community Right to Know so provisions. So are lawmakers doing anything? Well, there's the FRAC Act, which is on the floor of Congress, and there's a possible moratorium that could happen in New York State this week if, okay. if the lawmakers vote for that moratorium, and I would support that. All right, we're going to leave it there. And we should point out that documentary, Gasland, airs tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on HBO. Josh, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.